Thank you for joining us on Business News. The management of World Bank and International Monetary Fund, together with Moroccan authorities, have agreed to hold the 2023 annual meetings in Marrakesh, despite recent devastating earthquake in the country. This is contained in a statement jointly signed by World Bank President Ajit Banga, IMF Managing Director Kristalina Jujiva, and Kingdom of Morocco Minister of Economy and Finance Nadia uh, Feta. The meetings are scheduled to hold between October 9 and 15, just some 72 kilometers from the site of the 6.8 magnitude earthquake. Since the devastating earthquake in Morocco on September 8, the World Bank and the IMF staff have worked in close coordination with the Moroccan authorities and a team of experts to thoroughly access Marrakech's capacity to host the 2023 annual meetings. The World Bank plays a key role in global efforts to rent extreme poverty and boost shared prosperity. With just a year into its launch in Nigeria, the fifth generation network has hit half a million. This is according to the Executive Chairman, Nigerian Communications Commission, Professor Maru Dambata. Dambata disclosed that the nation's broadband penetration also rose to 47.0% as of July 2023. In July, Professor Dambata stated that 5G subscriptions had grown to over 60,000 subscriptions in the country. According to him, the country was aiming to achieve 50% broadband penetration by the end of 2023 and 70% broadband penetration by the end of 2025. He said, besides following the authorization of more telecommunications companies to operate in the Nigerian telecom sector, the investment profile has increased from $38 billion in 2015 to $75 billion currently, and this keeps growing daily. He said the NCC has generated over $847.8 million for the federal government from the sales of 5G C-band spectrum. Despite Nigeria's enormous wealth in energy resources, an estimated 84% of households lack access to quality cooking and lighting fuels. Wood fuel is still the main source of energy for cooking and heating for 56% of the population, thus nearly 30 million households and more than 100 million Nigerians depend on wood as a source of fuel for cooking, leaving the country ranked lowest in sub-Saharan Africa in the per capita usage of LPG, consuming about 1.8 kilograms when compared to other countries. On our flagship program, Business Nigeria, the Executive Secretary of Nigerian Association of LPG Marketers, Mr. Basi Isin, highlighted major barriers to a production and supply value chain of LPG Nigeria. We know that the inconsistent and insufficient supply of gas has been responsible for this price distortion. Our gas comes from two places, two sources. Okay. The LNG, which is the local, the local yeah. the bigger source of local supplies, and the imported version. The two are still there. Now, in the domestic scheme, the domestic allocation doesn't come directly to marketers. It goes to what I'll call middlemen. And some of these don't even some of them don't even have any LPG infrastructure on ground. The product gets to them. They just they sell. It they sell. Before even last year, the product was getting to them for about say like five, six million. And before it gets out of the terminal, it's about twelve. How do you explain that? It is what we buy that we sell. That we sell. It is what we buy that we sell. Now if all this comes up, I mean, what happens? It's so bad that when the current consignment you have, when you sell it, you can't replenish the stock again because you have to go and look for some money to fund it. And of course, the closest place is the bank. And bank's funds are not cheap anymore. Of course, they've never been cheap. Of so we come back to the same place. The point is that at this point, we are tired of being made the scapegoat. So we are coming out to tell people, mm. tell the government, look, the plant owners are not the problems because they buy from these sources. And it, was, it is what they sell to us. We just come out and sell to the people. 
Away from there now, over 8.5 trillion naira has been generated by the Federal Inland Revenue Service this year, ahead of a 15 trillion naira and 14% tax to GDP ratio annual target. The outgoing chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mr. Mohamed Nami, made this known at the handing over ceremony to his successor, Mr. Zakio Sadediji, in Abuja. The new acting chairman, on his part, targets raising the country's tax to GDP, uh, GDP ratio to 18% over the next three years, surpassing the continent's average ratio of 16.5%. Lara Folanyo reports. The official handover ceremony of the outgoing chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service to his successor. The former chairman says he assumed office in 2019 to find the system grappling with gross inefficiencies which limited revenue generation. Reforms embarked upon by him to change the narrative include operational restructuring, automated processes, as well as leveraging the tax promax using in-house capacities amongst other strategies to drive a massive rise in tax revenue. The service is currently contributing over 70 percent of the revenue being shared monthly by FAC. The service is on track to set yet another record in 2023 as it collected over 8.5 trillion Naira already cash from 1st January to 14th September. It may interest us to know that our projected total tax 2020 collection is a minimum of 15 trillion and a projected tax to GDP of nearly 14% by end of the year 2023. The acting chairman acknowledged the efforts of his predecessor and success is already recorded in tax income generation. He says the country's existing revenue crisis makes it imperative to hit the ground running by finding innovative ways of encouraging voluntary tax compliance. The target is to push up the country's tax to GDP ratio to 18% over the next three years, surpassing Africa's 16.5% average ratio. We will implement a robust enforcement model that effectively deter tax evader while maintaining fairness and transparency in our processes. We are committed to simplifying our tax system making it accessible and comprehensible, thereby facilitating for voluntary tax payment and fostering a sense of civic responsibility. Quality data will be a cornerstone of our operation, enabling us to measure our progress, make informed decisions, and maintain the highest standard of accountability. The new FIRS boss also pledged to make staff welfare a priority to enhance service delivery in tax generation. Mr. Zaki of Sadideji previously served as Executive Secretary of the National Sugar Development Council and was made the Special Advisor to the President on Revenue before his present appointment. Lara Folayo, TVC News, Abuja. And our global domestic product growth in is on course to hit about 3.0% in 2023. This is according to the Organization of Economic Development in its latest update of its forecast for major economies on Tuesday. This is an upgrade from 2.7% in June outlook by the firm's forecast. It says the global growth was expected to slow to 2.7% in 2024, down from its estimate of 2.9% in June. The Paris-based body said it now expected the U.S. economy to grow 2.2% this year rather than the 1.6% it forecast in June, as U.S. growth proves more resilient than most economists expected in the face of a series of rate hikes. Organization for Economic Development further disclosed that a stronger-than-expected U.S. economy is helping to keep a global slowdown in check this year, but a weakening Chinese economy will prove to be a bigger a drag next year. And finally, political tensions and a slowing economy are sapping the uh, confidence of U.S. businesses operating in China with the number of companies optimistic about their five-year outlook falling to a record low. A survey published on Tuesday has shown, according to the annual survey published by the American Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai, the percentage of survey in U.S. firms optimistic about the five-year China business outlook fell to 52 percent. This was the lowest level of optimism reported since the American Chamber Shanghai Annual China Business Report was first introduced in 1999. 
Tensions between major world powers remain a concern for many companies with U.S.-China tensions cited as a top business challenge.